the way he pulls out the knife to show us is my favorite physical thing that happens in this movie. He's just talking like real quietly, like it's a Nazi knife. Uh, right now it's in a sheath, but um, you know, at any moment, Kia! And like, but like it doesn't Kia, right? So he like has to struggle with it for a little. It's the best. Yeah, he can just barely get it out of the fucking sheath. Forgot to grease. Sorry, can I take that one more time? Kia! All right, Don't. now it's uh, no, it feels stupid. Shing! Can Am I it? saying it, or can you put that into the film? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do both. God awful movie. 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 Welcome back to the Gamcast, where each week we sample another selection from Christian cinema to distract you from the nefarious plans of our satanic overlords. I'm your host, No Illusions, and sitting 700 miles to my immediate left is my good friend Heath and right Heath. Welcome back. I'm not a spy. <laughs> what? <laughs> I'm, I mean, thank you. Glad to be here. <laughs> sitting 900 miles to my northeast is my bad friend Eli Bosnick. Eli, how are you this fine afternoon, sir? Takes me two, three minutes to eat a slice of pizza tops. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, they've never been to Chicago. We'll yeah. get to it. Is that right? Yeah, no shit. All right. So tell us, Heath, what will we be breaking down today? We watched Out of Shadows. It's the story of how the CIA learned magic from Nazis and used Zoolander and James Bond to make us all ignore the fact that Hillary Clinton is fucking kids under a pizza place. Wow, well done. Yeah, it really is. Yeah, that's it. I mean, basically, a stuntman, well, stuntman slash journalist of espionage named Mike <laughs> writes what I just said on a banner and then writes, prove me wrong and sits at a table all day. <laughs> the movie. <laughs> that day of conversation is this fucking movie and I watched it. Wow. Right, but then job. he walks up to that table somehow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, wow. This is the first time I, I realized that this guy was literally stuntman Mike. Amazing. Okay. <laughs> this is stuntman Mike. And Eli, how bad was this movie? Well, if you love the groundbreaking documentary skills of pandemic and loose change, but everyone was way too qualified and skeptical for your taste, <laughs> you will love this movie. The only thing more horrifying than this movie is how many millions and millions of people watch this movie. It's millions? Yeah. This movie was so popular. What? Not one, not four, but 11 listeners reached out with some form of, my cousin just sent me this fucking thing on Facebook. Please do an episode about it. Please. <laughs> All right, wait, million, are you sure it's millions? Because, like, the YouTube uh, link that we have had, like, 500,000 views. Apparently, that is, and I do not know this, so big grain of salt with this. Apparently, it saw a bunch of views on Facebook and YouTube before it got taken down by Zuckerberg uh, and the I, Jews. Uh -huh, I yep. see, I see. All those are repostings. I gotcha. Okay, so, so and this, this is one of those documentaries that uses this nefarious fucking strategy that we've seen before where... You tell a bunch of people who are ignorant of everything a couple of things they don't know, right? Like a couple of CIA things that have come out along the way that like maybe these people have never heard of, right? So then people are like, oh, I don't know. I don't think that's true. So you look it up and you're like, huh, that is true. And after you're exhausted from all that fact checking, they start just making shit up and throwing that at you as well, right? Yep. yep. So th th that's the entire idea is to bury your nine pieces of bullshit with, I mean, 300 and we'll get to the way this movie closes but, but you know you you bury your bullshit in act three of a movie where most of the shit that you say for the first two thirds checks out if somebody looks into it right yeah if, if you say something that's false and then something that's true and then something that's false the false things are adjacent to true right so like, that's, <laughs> that's a real thing it's very close to true now <laughs> but what's great about it is that he has crazy Tourette's almost so even when he's talking about a true thing he can't help but end in yes. crazy <laughs> right. Right. Like, Why? what mm, a lot of people don't know about the gulf of tonkin that gulf is made entirely out of kool-aid no no you had it you were fine if there is the gulf of tonkin that's real you gotta just chop it you gotta chop it you say something done <laughs> <laughs> the Tuskegee Airmen, or should I say Air don't, Beavers? Don't, no. Oh my God. Shouldn't have said it. <laughs> oh, Jesus <Me>. Christ. <laughs> All right. So, is there anything you guys want to nominate this one for being the best at being the worst at? 
Yeah, I'm going to go with best worst about us on this producer's website. Oh, I'm so glad you're bringing this up. <laughs> yes. yes. So good. <laughs> Outofshadows.org. I don't know. It's this like Christian group that's behind this thing. They're a bunch of assholes. This horrible backstory. We might get to that. But they're about us on their website says this project is the result of two years of blood, sweat, and tears by a team of woke professionals. <laughs> <laughs> Patriots made this documentary with the sole purpose of getting the truth out there. <laughs> Patriots. Jesus Christ. Woke professional. Yes, Patriots. right. <laughs> what does that word mean to you? <laughs> also, we should point out this entire movie is based on people forgetting to type a word when searching for Ronan Farrow's book. Right? That's, 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 their yep. business model is out of shit. Yep, and look, they're raping kids. I got it. Yep, okay, yep. perfect. It's there got go. rape. It's got shadows. That's all I need. <laughs> all right, so <laughs> I was going to go with best worst verbosity. Yes! All right. My God, this guy, Stuntman Mike, every fucking sentence of his starts with like, and then I began to start realizing upon my research that I was doing until up to that point that... <laughs> Jesus, you're going to pass a voice? To just stop. <laughs> just say your fucking sentence, man. <laughs> Noah and Heath's notes devolve into them diagramming his sentences in the last... Oh, they the look movie. like dinosaurs and shit. You know, it's like abstract paintings. I was drawing lines in red pen across my screen by the end of this fucking movie. <laughs> <sighs> also, if you're going to be like using fancy words get it fucking right he didn't even use, this isn't even fancy he got eminent imminent wrong he tried to call an <laughs> eminent threat it's, fuck you he get got it right demigod and demigod demigod <laughs> <laughs> yeah he tries to he was he didn't know whether it was demigod or demigod right, he was trying he to hedge it. his bet so yes. he was hedging the thing to being like demigod <laughs> yeah, Demo. I meant whatever the right one was him ago. <laughs> Is there was. a ZH in that word? <laughs> totally was. <laughs> and I was going to go with best worst, not so crazy now, am I? Look, <laughs> we have watched documentaries about how alien encounters are actually demons, mm -hmm. about how we didn't go to the moon, and yet this movie far and away has the best moment where its very own maker <laughs> leans back in a tinfoil hat filled with his own shit and says, well, <laughs> what do you think about that? <laughs> oh, it's, it's pretty amazing. fucking impressive. It's, it's one of the greatest punchlines in the history of cinema, and they have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, we've got a lot of yarn and pushpins to arrange on the other side of this break, so we're going to keep it brief. When we come back, we'll dive into all the unmedicated ramblings that are... Out of shadows. Uh, Eli, Heath, I'm going out. Is there anything you guys want? Mm, nah, I'm good. Yeah, we can just get it delivered. I, I mean, you can't get everything delivered. I mean, we, we pretty much can. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, what about a fancy steak? There's like 200 places on my phone a right lot of, now. A lot of options on oh, that. Oh, yeah. You know, right, right. Okay. A uh, customized hat with your catchphrase on it. Etsy is... A Great oh, well, yeah. Okay, okay. What about your toothbrush? Psh, not only can we get mm. our toothbrush delivered, we get our favorite toothbrush and oral care delivered automatically. Oh, that's right. And our listeners should do that too. Wait, what's your favorite toothbrush and oral care? Quip. What's Quip? The Quip electric toothbrush has timed sonic vibrations with 30 second pulses to guide a dentist recommended two minute routine. And there's even a size down version designed for kids. Yeah. Paired with Quip's anti-cavity toothpaste in mint or watermelon flavor, you get all the right ingredients teeth actually need, and none they don't. Plus, Quip brush heads, toothpaste, and floss refills are automatically delivered on a dentist-recommended schedule every three months for just $5 each. A friendly reminder when it's time for a refresh and to stay committed to your oral health. And shipping is free. And if you go to getquip.com slash awful right now, you'll get your first refill free. That's your first refill free at getquip.com slash awful. Spelled G-E-T-Q-U-I-P dot com slash awful. Quip, the good habits company. Um, but what's that? Oh, that's our custom hats and steak. Yeah, good thinking, Noah. Okay. Mine says wild card. <laughs> Hi, I'm Eli Bosnick. 
I'm Heath Enright. And I'm No Illusions. Do you have a mental illness? Do you maintain the illusion of feeling in control of your life by telling yourself that you know big secrets that other people don't? Then why not try the Catholic Church? Why waste your time on easily debunked conspiracy theories like Pizzagate when the Catholic Church is just as bad and it's real? From secret Nazi gold to government influence to strange occult practices, the Catholic Church has everything a paranoid personality is looking for. And again, it's all real. The Catholic Church. All the conspiracy, none of the theory. And we're back for the breakdown, and we're going to open up this movie on an FBI warning, but in reverse, <laughs> right? It's like it's like if the, he him warning the FBI, I'm a pirate, whatever the fuck I want, motherfucker. <laughs> Am I being detained in yeah, my movie? Right. Yeah, no. It starts off with the text equivalent of yelling at a waitress about how his friends died face down in the muck, so he can enjoy this family <laughs> restaurant. <laughs> And then we get his little opening line where he's like, you know, uh, what is it? Like, why do you believe what you believe? Right. Yeah. Personally, I believe the information that I get on YouTube documentaries about the deep state. Well, there you so I, don't, I don't think he's talking to me. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you only believe what you believe because you trusted somebody. You fucking sucker. <laughs> <laughs> And that's honestly, he could have ended the documentary there and we would know everything we needed to know about his opinions and yeah, knowledge base. Really? Yeah, exactly. He's going to spend the rest of the documentary fleshing that out. <laughs> <laughs> but he assures us right up front, and I love this because they always do this. He assures us right up front that he's no conspiracy theorist. He doesn't have time for Bigfoot. Right. <laughs> but the best part is. Like most of the documentaries we've watched about this stuff, they go like, oh, but I'm a scientist, but I'm a this, but I'm a skeptic. But he's just like, nah, man, I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm fucking busy. I work. Uh, I hit the gym. I have those observed <laughs> visitations with my son once a month. So like, yeah, no way I believe on true things. Yeah, man. I'm too busy with, you know, GTL to read about facts, but I watch a lot of uh, entertainment tonight. I know all about Hollywood is what I'm saying. Yes. I'm a stunt man. I'll be your information source about world news yes. let's do this <laughs> yeah right so that's the whole story is he's going to tell us about the inside of the deep dark secrets of hollywood because he's a stunt man he knows that shit right they invite him to all the hollywood parties stunt man the kid on the playground who will eat boogers of the movie making this <laughs> <laughs> We have any stuntman listeners. He wasn't talking about you. He was talking about all your colleagues. Oh, he's yeah, talking they, about you. I they think would, we all know he was talking they about They would you. take their headphones out in disgust, except they can't move their arms that high up. <laughs> <laughs> all right, wait. So I, I, I have to talk about this line. I love this line so goddamn much. He says kind of in the opening of this movie, he says, the only thing we consume more of than content is air. What the hell could that possibly mean? <laughs> we consume air the most of all the things, followed by content. What is he talking about? What, what units are in his head when he said that, I wonder? Yeah, by dry weight? See, I was very proud here because this was the very first time in the history of this show that both my wife and son walked out of the room during while watching one of these movies. <laughs> <laughs> my wife had my son in a little oh. carrier and she she looked at him and she said, you hear that? The first two human needs are air and content and walk out of the room. There you go. <laughs> yeah. And also we should point out that. OK, so this is the in the style of crazy person YouTube video. This is edited like the editor was getting paid by the cut. As he's talking, there's just random clips of every fucking thing showing up here and there. So when we say, and then we see it, it has nothing to do with anything that we're talking about. That's why, right? <laughs> so he sets it up. He's like, you know, he's talking about how the CIA is involved in Hollywood. We see Katy Perry dressed Egyptian in that video. The the, the Illuminati freaks love to obsess over. Right. And then, then he cuts to just... Some guy, he's like, hey, guy, is the CIA involved in Hollywood? Yes. Well, that's settled, according to guys. <laughs> yes. Next scene. Well, I mean, and and I mean, they license their logos and shit, right? Like, of course they are, right? <laughs> well, anyway, so, yeah, so we get the title. We get some sweet, sweet car crashes. Hey, did you guys know? I, I have a question for you. Did you know that car crashes in movies are 
not real? They're fake. It's all Those a are, fucking lie. Fake <laughs> <laughs> I mean, they're really they crashing. Don't. They really crash. They crash. Yeah. yeah, exactly. He's trying to say that. It's so dumb. And then he's like, yeah, just uh, to remind you, um, I'm a stuntman, so... International politics, I got you. Yeah, yeah. My job for 28 <laughs> years was to get brain damage for money. Yeah. <laughs> All right, but are we talking great films, like fantastic cinema? What, what kind of movies is this guy in <laughs> here? Yeah, Eli, when we're going to watch a sad movie, you have to warn me. This is so... He, he's going like, <laughs> I had such a great... I was like, I had a really cool job. I'm like, dude, we just watched you get pulled out of a car that rolled over 21 times. No, the fuck you didn't. He's like, I worked my way all the way up to second unit director for Batman Forever. Uh, Batman Forever? Maybe you've heard of it? <laughs> yes, yeah, so the Batman Crushing forever. it. I'm a player in the biz. <laughs> Yeah, he's like, he's like, I didn't set out to be a stunt man, you know. I just wanted to work in Hollywood, and I wasn't smart enough to do any other jobs but sit in a car and try not to die. So <laughs> that's what I settled for. I didn't go out to be a stunt man. People just kept not caring if I died. So yeah, it was <laughs> really a perfect job for me. Also, he introduces the idea here that like the CIA is crafting Hollywood to make themselves look better. And he mentions Black Panther. <laughs> okay. Was he suggesting that the protagonist of the movie called Black Panther was not the Black Panther? <laughs> and instead, the CIA guy. Well, no, Martin Freeman was pretty badass at that, though. Like, he, he flew the yeah. ship, the virtual ship and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, he was a good guy. Sure. <laughs> hey, want the side good guy. Yeah, yes. if, yeah, right. It feels like the CIA could have gotten more for their money. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. If your documentary cites a tweet and it's not about the president, it's not a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not a good sign for your documentary. <laughs> All right, so then he tells us about the injury that ended his career as a stuntman because, you know, that's how careers as a stuntman end. And he talks at length about his rehab, and I'm like, my God, this is like listening to a drunk person give me their idea for a diatribe. What is any of this about? Uh, but don't worry, it's all going to come full circle. No, it's not, because we're going to now hear from Mike's Pelvic floor therapist. Yes. Yep. <laughs> whose identity, if you look at the bottom of the screen in small letters, it says her identity is being protected due to the sensitivity of her profession. Yeah. Yep. Well, at first I thought she just didn't want to be associated with this stupid fucking documentary, which would have made perfect sense. But then as she goes, it's like, oh, okay, she's batshit crazy and would lose her license if they knew who she was. <laughs> I see. Okay. Yeah, they blocked out her face so that some guy didn't have to walk into her office on Monday and be like, hey, Carol, have you been, ugh, spoilers for the documentary, uh, praying over patients and telling them about satanic conspiracies? Because we really just need you to do butthole exercises. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's a real clench, unclench profession. <laughs> Yeah, though, but that's the whole thing. Like he's he's talking about his therapist and and how impressed she was. By the way, he has to he takes a, like a side moment to talk about how good he was at rehab. By the way, Carol, just really quick, um, would you say I was too advanced for physical therapy, <laughs> or or regular, or too probably too right? Is that what you would say? But yeah, but then he starts talking about how she told him that he had dark spirits over him and she wanted to pray for him. And he kept going back. So that says a lot about this guy, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then we get a quote from her, which was insane. Do I have this right? She was like, there's a lot of just kid fucking related to my job. I don't know if you know. Um, like, who do you think they call after Hillary Clinton fucks a kid in the spine? Me, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I was just like, what <laughs> just happened? And I love, I love, there's always a little tiny grain of truth in the deep well of the crazy, which means that like Richard Gere, you know, broke his pelvis in a skiing accident and showed up at this woman's office. And the entire time she was doing butthole exercises with him, she was just like, I know you crammed a toddler up there. You can't do me, Richard Gere. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, this is when the, the Mike, the stuntman goes, and I said to her, man, I was like, either you're crazy or you think all of this is real? And I wrote what? in my notes, that 
is not an or proposition. Nope. She, uh... <laughs> yeah, right. So, but they, I, I got to admit, okay, so we're about nine and a half, ten minutes in when this happened. I was so unprepared for this movie to get that fucking crazy because it had been weird. Like, right, because we're implying that the CIA is behind Black Panther and shit like that. But then 10 minutes in, it's it's like suddenly she she's like, well, you know, think about it. When they rape the fuck out of little children, who do you think has to put them back together? Me. And I'm I, I just I went out and I bought a turntable so that I could do the sound <laughs> effect. Right. <laughs> hey, Carol, can we just go back to the kegels? <laughs> Well, not just that, but let's assume that this woman is being honest, right? The way that she gets the word out about her physical proof of high scale pedophile satanic cults is just randomly gossiping with her patients. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I have the evidence that children are being tortured by the Hollywood elite, and I'm just going to whisper it to you <laughs> in hopes you'll make a YouTube documentary. About <laughs> the it. end. <laughs> what happened to this kid? Kid just likes walked into a cummy door. Is that like. <laughs> All right. So, yeah. So and then Mike, stuntman Mike tells us, he's like, you know, my awakening didn't happen in a church. I'm like, it happened watching a YouTube video. Did <laughs> it, dude? No, he found God after he saw statues of demons fucking kids at parties <laughs> that he went to. Right. What parties? I, and then Anne scene. Like, I, what is he talking about? That was a shockingly honest admission. He's like, I found God because I was afraid of my imagination. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> no, I get it. It's like when you find out you have friends who are Arizona art people, right? Like you get into their house. They've been normal up till then. Then everything's a fucking cactus and he's wearing a tie that's only got strings on the bottom of it. You just, you're cool. You're cool. <laughs> so... What's even better is his exact quote is, I didn't find God because I went to church. I found God because the Luciferians were real. And I just love the idea of him like walking into a room, seeing Lucifer getting a hojo from Scarlett Johansson <laughs> and him just being like, oh. well, I'm guess, Christian now. I, I guess Christ my is my Lord church. and Savior. <laughs> There's a lot to break down about what I just saw, but... <laughs> is that an interracial couple? <laughs> Scar Joe, it's not worth it for the thing, ghost in the shell thing. You're still going to yell at me. I'll talk to you about it later. <laughs> is this where the coats are? I'm here because of the coats. <laughs> well, and I love to. He's like, there's a, he's like, well, you know, it was about then when she told me about the satanic pedophile cult that runs Hollywood. I started doing my own research. I started reading books. And as the fucking movie is <laughs> saying, reading books. We're watching a montage of him scrolling through Twitter as though the editor was trying to say, you the fuck you read books, man. Come on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so I got down to some serious journalism. Um, <laughs> Twitter. I, and, and he actually says this. He says, I got off social media and then I created a social media a Twitter account, account. And I got on yes. social media <laughs> and then I found the truth. Yeah. <laughs> and by the way, the truth is that... Walt Disney controls everything except the internet where he learned that. Yeah, right, Ooh. right. Yeah, exactly. And and look, and this is where we start that sort of like, but hey, check this out. This part is true, right? Because he starts talking about corporate monopolies and he's like, you know, fucking six companies control every goddamn thing you see. And you're like, well, yeah, that is a thing, right? That's real and problematic and has nothing to do whatsoever with satanic, <laughs> satanic torture, pedophile torture, pedophile torture pedophiles. Yes, exactly. Otherwise, why would they both own Fox? Shit, that yes. doesn't make any sense. <laughs> <laughs> and that leads some fucking how to the North Korean hack of Sony Pictures. <laughs> he gets lost in his own documentary. <laughs> <laughs> Constantly. Like, you remember when North Korea hacked Sony? Yeah. Well... Yeah, I was a thing that happened <laughs> all over the fucking place. I love too. He's like, yeah, you know, that really got me interested because I had to get life lock after that. I'm like, that dude, that's internet homeopathy. But OK, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but but he's saying like, hey, you know, the official story was that they were pissed off about that movie where their leader was murdered by American operatives. But in truth, it was different to that. Not going to tell you what, but different. Yeah, I was really hoping he was leading us to, like, 
Kim Jong-un is a crusader for anti-pedophile justice, but no, no, he doesn't. He hasn't managed to connect those dots. I honestly thought he was about to explain to us that that's why Sony Pictures wouldn't distribute his documentary, right? Because <laughs> they're in cahoots with the CIA. <laughs> and then we meet fucking Kevin Ship. Speaking of which. <laughs> <laughs> now, so is the, the, here's what I could dig up. Now, I should say, like, during this movie, I had to stop every six minutes and dive down some weird ass internet rabbit hole. So I'm sure my research is wildly incomplete on a lot of this stuff. As near as I can tell, Kevin Ship is an ex CIA agent that sued the agency for housing his family in a place that had mold in it. And then the CIA sealed all the documents related to this because, like, the place that he was, the place that they had housed him was a secret. Because they're the CIA. Right, because they're the CIA. <laughs> right. Yeah, exactly. So he didn't like that. And then he started, he came out, like, quit his job and, or was fired from his job, something, and started saying that, like, the CIA was using chemtrails to make the frogs gay or whatever the fuck people would pay him <laughs> to say. Yeah. What's amazing is when you Google Kevin Ship, you see that New York Times story and then everything else on him is from crazybullshit.com. Yes, uh -huh. it's oh, true... it so hard to find anything <laughs> reputable about that guy. <laughs> yeah, he also uh, invented a meme chart thing that they show us in the movie, actually. It shows how banks, lobbyists, the military, and um, three other blank areas in his chart all point <laughs> to the White House with arrows. <laughs> he, was, he didn't realize that I was due by Thursday. Oh, my God. <laughs> he, he, he drew the arrows first and didn't come up with enough things to go with his arrow. It's so ridiculous. Oh, I was going to get around to the world of professional tennis, but you know what? I'll submit this for now. It's a work in progress. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> All right. So we cut to Kevin Ship, right? He's here to tell us that the CIA did too look into movies as propaganda, and of course they fucking did. <laughs> they show a clip of a document that says, like, people like movies. Yes, it <laughs> <laughs> Movies make people happy, and then they murder foreign leaders for us, and then they, um, and they fuck kids in the spine for us. So oh. it's real good for the CIA, the movies. <laughs> and let me just say, I, I went and actually read this document. I oh, Googled good. it and found it, and, and the document is... People like movies, so we should put patriotic messages in these movies. But it's also got a section that is clearly your grandpa explaining to your great great grandpa what a movie is at the CIA. <laughs> right. <It's> the, yeah. <laughs> it's, Dave, uh, just quick note stop jumping away from the train. It's just coming, <laughs> it's just a film. <laughs> I love at one point he like holds up the fucking paper that you're talking about. And he's like, this is an unclassified document. I'm like, yep, your your hidden conspiracy theory is neither a hidden nor a conspiracy. Right. Like, <laughs> like the, this is just a thing you didn't know about until just now. Everybody look at this. This is freely available information. Why are they hiding? It? <laughs> <laughs> Which could be the tagline of the fucking movie. Yeah, that's, <laughs> exactly. And I, I love this part where he, he brings he's talking about Disney here. So it's like, you know, Bambi and Dumbo and the Manchurian candidate. They're all connected. <laughs> right. And then he goes, hey, you remember when we used tax money to win? Uh, it was a little world war against the Nazis. That was evil Disney propaganda about taxation that made that possible. What? So this, they're the bad guy. Right. What, what the <laughs> hell point was he trying to make there? That like, man, if you think about it, if it hadn't been for Disney, the fucking Nazis would have won. What? Why? <laughs> okay. Anyway, so yeah, and then they start talking about Operation Mockingbird, which was a almost certainly real CIA operation trying to like, you know, control American media or trying to like plant stories in the American media. Again, one of those things that like you can look up and yes, this is yeah, I think the CIA still doesn't admit that it happened or whatever. But yes, this is a thing that happened so that you'll you'll be, you know, primed for the real bullshit in Act Three. Right. We also have an amazing moment where they turn to Ian Fleming. The the inspiration, <laughs> by the way, for the character on D D minus Floon Puff. <laughs> right. the, the, yeah. the pathological liar Ian Fleming, and they they catch the most sane three seconds of him on film ever <laughs> where a guy's like, so are you a CIA spy? And he's like, well, I could not tell you whether or not I'm a spy. If I were a spy, <laughs> mm, 
said I'm a spy. <laughs> really, I feel like everyone would remember you because you're the craziest talking human yeah, right. ever. <laughs> Why are you holding a handkerchief over your face? Well, I don't understand what's happening. I've become invisible. <laughs> okay. Okay. I think we're done. But the point here is that, like, James Bond movies were made by the CIA with Fleming to make them look better also. Kind of like yeah. Black Panther. Right. Mm -hmm. So, like, when the CIA would get investigated, they just show James Bond movies. And the investigators <laughs> would be like, Bond, <laughs> sweet. Oh, sweet. Nice. Never mind. Well, Sorry yeah, because this, like, somehow this leads him to the point where he's like, yeah, man, the CIA, like, they, they got their fingers all up in the James Bond movies. That's why you never see any serious journalistic investigations into the CIA. <laughs> what? Um, Take me there, buddy. Literally, he says that. He's a, when was the last time that the mainstream media did a serious report on the CIA? And I was like, when recently they got caught tor torturing? Yeah. Um, right. <laughs> oh, you didn't want me to answer. And oh, scene. right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then, on. and I love this fucking shit. They play that the Sinclair opinion piece montage where the right wing media puts like 75 people out there to say like in my opinion that I just came up with just now you know that, that I'm sure everybody's seen that montage at this point but they're using this to say like look the Illuminati is controlling what you see but actually it's right wing outlets trying to push bullshit onto local news networks which is way more dangerous and again real Right. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, I, t I tell you what, there's actually a couple of guys in black suits at my door. So I'm going to pause real quick while I figure <laughs> out what they want. Uh, but we'll be back in a flash with even more out of shadows. Hey, Eli, you're all whistly. Why the good mood? Is your baby finally sleeping through the night? Shh, not even close. Ha uh, has parenting gotten easier? Uh, no. No, not really. Okay. Well, what is it? Oh, my sheets rock. Your sheets rock? They do. And that's the name of the company I got them from. My Sheets Rock has created the Regulator Sheets, which are designed specifically to keep hot sleepers cool and cold sleepers comfortable. They regulate temperature, wick moisture, stay breathable, and are so soft, you'll sleep comfortable every night. That's because these sheets are made from the best-in-class bamboo rayon, the holy grail of sheeting. This miracle material transfers body heat two times more effectively than regular sheets and reduces humidity by 50%, so you can experience your best night's sleep yet. Wow. So like, so what do they feel like? They feel like sheets at a fancy hotel. Ooh, I love that. Yeah, they're so soft, they're so comfy, the whole bed feels luxurious and fancy. The whole bed? The whole bed. Don't believe me? Their five-star customer reviews speak for themselves. Plus, they offer a 90-day risk-free trial and free shipping and returns. Check out My Sheets Rock at MySheetsRock.com slash awful and enter our code awful for 10% off and free shipping. That does sound good. It is. Um, also, you have a diaper in your hair. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Um, um, you going to get that or? We, nah. Okay. Hi. No illusions again with another special message. So we heard your feedback. We listened to your questions. You told us you don't want to focus on the Catholic Church. And we hear you. That's right. So why not try the Trump administration? That's right. The Trump administration. The Trump administration has everything you're looking for. Foreign spies, secret government abductions, and even dark money payouts. And the best part is... It's all true. Why limit yourself to things like InfoWars and Russian Twitter bots when you can follow this conspiracy on the front page of the New York Times? The Trump administration. Everything they accused Obama of, but real. You know he's fucking kids. You know he's fucked kids. A so million times. Fucking and we're back for more of this shit. We're going to rejoin the action on a Harry Truman quote about how the CIA are some shifty motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, again, that's true. Right? It, you snuck a true one in there. Just yeah. be ready for well, the next thing. Yeah, here's another true one that he sneaks in there and makes sound all insidious and shit. He's like, you know, did you know that there's actually a CIA entertainment industry liaison? Like, well, <laughs> the, yeah, of course there is, man. His job is to 
field questions when Michael Bay's assistant wants to know if they buy their cars outright or lease them. <laughs> right? Exactly. Jesus. And then we get introduced to his buddy, Brad, whatever the fuck. <laughs> um, so he's like, yeah, so me and this other stuntman, we, we, it turns out we're the only people who noticed this giant conspiracy because we're stuntmen. Um, <laughs> Eli, you're in the business a little bit. Question for you. Is there something about being a stuntman that I'm... What is a stuntman? <laughs> well, you know, they do all the movie stunts and then they keep all the movies pedophile secrets. That's basically their two main oh, jobs. Do, okay, well, then... Uh, sorry, um, proceed. <laughs> Withdrawn. Withdrawn. You watch yourself getting radicalized into deeper crazy in the form of Brad in this movie, <laughs> right? Because he's like, I know, you've been watching this movie thinking, hey, you probably have a mental illness, but... Would you like to see someone who's externalized it? And Brad's like, ar, 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 ar. <laughs> well, right, yeah. Well, the, the way he introduces Brad is to basically say, well, you know, so I started asking around about this, and literally everyone I knew thought I was crazy except Brad. And then we got straight to Brad. <laughs> and but, I'm sorry, by the way, did any of the stuff that Brad said end up adding to up to a thought at any point? No, which means nope. which means there's hours of footage that were cut from this documentary. Wow. <laughs> Imagine what had to come out of Brad's mouth that the people who made this movie were like, oh, I don't think they're quite ready for that, Brad. <laughs> no. Also, I, I must know what was happening just outside of the frame the whole time Brad was talking that he was wildly <laughs> distracted by and could not look away from. Like... It felt like somebody kept acting like they were going to throw a snowball in his face or something, and he was wincing and he couldn't look away. So, and by the way, and, and so here's another weird one. And I do, I didn't bother looking very deep into this, but there is some truth behind this. He starts talking about how the CIA had some involvement in Walt Disney's plan to buy all the land for Disneyland. Oh. He, yeah, I went oh, down this. Eli, do you know the you know the answer to that? I did. I did. All right. So here's the connection. Get ready for the bush bins. So you know how lots of people worked for the military during World War II. One would say the majority of people because of the draft. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, because of the World War. <laughs> yeah. That, <laughs> right. That war that the world got in. Well, a lot of those guys went on to work for Disney. End of conspiracy. Oh, you're done. Well, you're done. Okay. No, no, there actually was some CIA involvement of it, or at least there's like some, you know, people a little more credible than Brad making that <laughs> accusation out there in the universe. So I, I don't, I don't really know what, what's up with it. I know that there was a whole bunch of secret shit that Disney was doing, trying to like keep everybody from knowing why he wanted the land and then upping the, the price of it or whatever. So I, I don't know what it was, but again, it's one of those things that like, yeah, there's a kernel of truth here to fool you and to make you relax when we start to say the really crazy shit in act three. Right. Yeah. Oh, uh, speaking of which, this is where we, they bring up uh, operation paperclip. Yes. <laughs> and, and fucking Kevin ship pretends that the CIA pretends that operation paperclip wasn't real. <laughs> yeah. But then he says literally next sentence. Oh, lots of movies were made about it. Actually. Um, <laughs> Those movies are okay. So the Marvel universe is real, but a lot of movies are fake too <laughs> and, and trick you about the CIA. Oh. And then he says, this might be my favorite line in the movie. He says, <laughs> people call me crazy, but did you know that the CIA invented me being crazy? The CIA <laughs> invented that technique of calling me crazy. Well, yeah, right. The CIA invented the word conspiracy theory, that word. <laughs> They invented that to shut down scrutiny of the JFK assassination, right? That's that's what okay. he claims. I mean, Bush Sr. never got in trouble. Like, that does track. <laughs> also, he gets Operation Paperclip wrong, which is really well, good. I He's mean, like, the yeah. way he explains it, it's a conspiracy theory and bullshit. Yeah. Yes, we brought Nazis over to work for our... Don't mind control. Okay, you could you could have just said brought Nazis over. You were set. You had a real thing, but no, it was that the CIA learned about occult devil magic from the Nazis. And I got so excited when he said that because I'm like, oh my god, we are going to work our way back around to that pelvic floor therapist. Okay, all right, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I give it up. <laughs> 
which means it's time to talk about MK yes, Ultra. Uh, yep, MK Ultra and the LSD stuff, and yeah, and we see <laughs> we see an old timey computer screen at this point, and it just says like CIA files about MK Ultra. Press enter to expose us. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Oh, I love to. They throw in some uh, some clips of. Like the CIA LSD experiment, some old school back in the 60s, people trying LSD for the first time, which is like watching those granny smoke bongs for the first time videos and shit, right? Oh, oh man, <laughs> I really great. could go for some LSD. I'll tell you what, I was watching that video going like, yeah, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> it does <laughs> seem fun. I didn't know where my hands were. <laughs> and especially considering that these are people from like the 50s or the 60s, or whatever, you know that this is the most fun these people ever had right yeah exactly lives. exactly yeah <laughs> and then and look I, again they they're making this seem nefarious and there definitely was some nefarious shit you know vis-a-vis the cia and lsd but also like it probably was a good idea for the u.s government to figure out what the fuck this weird mind-bending drug was once it was discovered right like it, it would be dereliction of duty that if no government agency whatsoever took a look at this thing yeah we did it super evil but we right, should have well, yeah, done it exactly, just not super right. evil yeah also like we did a citation needed episode about this but mk ultra is really just your great great grandpa trying to do science with drugs but he's your great great grandpa he's like all right now he seems happy can he read minds i don't fucking know what there, <laughs> right, were, yes. in my day there were only two chemicals h <laughs> and then we had the o that was it yeah. that's all we needed but but mk ultra's done now but this guy's mm, not is convinced it? that it's done <laughs> Because he's he, he like called the CIA and was like, I'm a stuntman making a documentary. And I called them. They would not tell me MK Ultra is done. Do they know who I am? Are you fucking kidding me? It's still happening. Well, I loved it because like he finishes that all. But we cut back to stuntman Mike and he's like, OK, you know what? I'm just going to go ahead and admit it. I don't understand what I'm saying to you right now. <laughs> right. Because he's going like I had a lot of trouble wrapping my head around MK Ultra. Because I'm trying to add satanic ritual abuse to it, and that doesn't fit. But, hear me out, I bet you thought Zoolander was fiction too, didn't you? This, all of us simultaneously <laughs> went insane in our notes here. <laughs> he was doing so good. It was like, yeah, man, MK Ultra was horrible. Just, just stop LSD talking. Thing just, you gotta chop it. And, you gotta yes. chop it. Zoolander's real. <laughs> There it is. That's why I said chop it. But see, you're falling right into his trap because he said Zoolander was a comedy so that people would think he's an idiot for saying Zoolander yes. is a documentary. Okay. Yeah. So so we're to believe that the CIA made Zoolander to reveal their plot, but... Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. Also made it a comedy to not reveal their plot. <laughs> yeah. right. Perfect double bluff. Well, see, the, I think the problem here, Heath, is that you don't really understand the word entertainment. So let me Zoolander. break this down. Oh, okay. For you. This <laughs> is so good. He opens the section by going, All right, so look. And I realized no one has ever said, All right, so look. And then has said <laughs> something that makes sense afterwards. <laughs> All right. So look, if you don't think male models are pulling the strings of a shadow <laughs> government with the Jews, you need to wake the fuck up. Speaking of which, every time you say speaking of which, man, it's not good. <laughs> and it's not it. speaking of which either, right? Like, it's <laughs> the, no, even that never. is a lie. <laughs> Noah, bring us into this entertainment thing, because this is where I, I had to pause the movie because I was crying with laughter. OK, so right. <laughs> so he says, like, you know, he's 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 trying for the Oxford English Dictionary to find entertainment as, but he gets it wrong and he gets it so horribly wrong that there's a moment where he's defining entertainment in a way that no one who's speaks english would recognize it and at the same time they're highlighting a completely different definition in the dictionary right? okay so you guys know air right <laughs> and you know it's content. like it's like adjacent to air in a certain ranking system that i put together right so he says he says well what does entertainment mean it means to bind or to hold and i'm like no, the fuck it doesn't. I started looking through the etymology. I'm like, it's it's French for entertain, motherfucker. And, <laughs> but here's the thing. What had happened is he looked in the dictionary and he glanced at the part where I was talking about the definition, like the form of entertain as in to like 
to entertain an idea or something like that, to hold that in your head. That's what he was reading. And he's like, entertainment to hold, to hold your brain. Mm -hmm. (laughs) And where does that come from? Hollywood. Hollywood. Jesus Christ. The ancient old English word Hollywood, which also (laughs) has an interesting meaning. And then he tries to do that like word association thing where he's like, Hollywood, Holly, trees, Wood, Hollywood. <laughs> Fuck, I did a survey. Yeah, right. Did a survey. Uh, All right, so this is actually a phenomenally common claim, a little canard that the conspiracy theorists do about how druids used holly to make their wands that would do mind control, and that's why they call it Hollywood. And I'm like, okay, then is it? it's just a coincidence that there's a fuck ton of holly trees there? Some fucking rancher <laughs> no, in 1887 the was in the druids took a across the Atlantic, <laughs> and they planted holly there. Long con. This is going to go great when we're doing mind control. Wait until we, <laughs> trust me, trust wait until me. we get to Boy, when they start, invent start trying movies. to beat the Nazis nefariously. <laughs> but now we get my favorite oh, God. word game, which is, you know how it's called TV? What's that stand for? Television? Yeah. Tell a vision. <gasps> <laughs> but wait, what's on a television, Eli? Channel. Channel? Oh my god, okay. what's on a channel, Eli? Programming. <laughs> Interesting. And I just love the idea that the, the Illuminati deep state are getting together and one of them's like, all right, what if we call it tell a vision? And he's like, you mean just the thing that it's going to be? Yeah, we just put it right out there. <laughs> Sorry, Dave. We're dropping mind control box and we're going with television. That's too fucking funny. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i loved that so much that was amazing we went on that little tangent yeah speaking of which uh you guys know plato the philosopher <laughs> yes mm-hmm, yeah <laughs> uh television tell a vision is just like plato's allegory of the cave is what they say yep oh i really wanted him to explain plato's <laughs> allegory of the cave oh my god i want to know what he thinks it is so bad in, in fairness, if you think Zoolander is a documentary, then yeah, it is kind of like the allegory of the king. A lot of things are. All right. And then I guess his buddy Dave is going to cut in to do announcer voice. And actually, I think the, the person who cuts in to do the announcer here, I think is the guy, Philip, whatever, who Philip Blair, is that his name? Yeah. The guy who's behind the whole documentary. Mm-hmm. The devout Catholic that's making a movie about how somebody else supports a child rape cabal. Yeah, right. that guy. Who's best known for his YouTube channel where he dresses in sackcloth and yells at gay pride parades. Seriously? Or the one, the video where he berated a guy in a wheelchair and told him the reason he's not Christian is because he's bitter about his disability. Oh my God, this guy's oh, disgusting. Wow. This guy could be president. <laughs> <laughs> or when he's trying to do a Ray Comfort speech to a slightly older looking 16 year old and asks her about her sex life. And her mom's like, hey, would you like to fucking die? And he's like, <laughs> <laughs> wow, it's on his channel and it's the fucking best. Oh, it's so bad. Yeah. So I, you, uh, you can see the flash forward to him ripping up his diploma from Ray's schools of doing someone's Jesus real good and throwing it on Ray's desk. <laughs> You a good person? Are you? You just asked my 16-year-old about her sex life. I just, how about you answer questions? Are you a good person? Do you fuck? No, nope, that's not it. Okay. Should have written it on my hand. So, yeah, so, and we really don't have time to get into this guy because he's not actually in the movie. It's just apparently he was the one producing the piece of shit. But at any rate, so, he, but he cuts in or somebody cuts in to narrate right here. It just out of fucking nowhere, like, like, damn stuntman Mike tagged him in and he's like you know we believe the news because we think that the people producing the news have our best interests at heart I'm like who the fuck thinks that (laughs) (laughs) right CNN always looking out for me who the fuck believes that Uh, the New York Times looking out for the little guy (laughs) yeah (laughs) right yeah exactly but then they start talking about how like in bed the entertainment industry is with the government and yeah that's problematic right again that's a real problem just not the problem he's saying it is and i would argue not in the way he says it is because he's like you know most communication companies have ties to the military because you can't just i don't know launch a satellite into space on your own they've got all sorts of forms for you to sign 
And then he goes, he, he goes full fucking nutter at this point uh, again. And they zoom out on that chart that shows the Bilderberg meeting and the Council on Foreign Relations and the Trilateral Commission pointing to everything. It's literally yarn and push bins at this point. We have gone full Illuminati. At this point, he starts talking about how the entertainment industry is, you know, trying to desensitize us to violence and Satanism. With great examples like the fact that Lucifer is on Netflix. <laughs> <laughs> yes, as is Ash versus Evil Dead. Hello. Speaking of which, did you know Bambi's mom dies in Bambi? <laughs> <laughs> so, Jesus. Bambi is part of MK Ultra. That's official. Right. For fuck's sake, th that is the worst argument ever made. The scene in Bambi did not desensitize anyone to anything, okay? <laughs> A lot of kids sitting at home heard that gunshot and were like, eh. <laughs> <laughs> It's all right, I guess. <laughs> Fucking deer. And then, and, and we also, we see that we, that they're being desensitized to Satanism, right? Because of a scene from Fantasia. <laughs> oh. <Yeah. laughs> Not just Bambi. Dumbo, Fantasia, the brooms. The brooms were satanic. <laughs> <laughs> he says at, at this point he's like, "And have you ever noticed how right in the sixties and seventies movies about Satanism became popular just as Satanism was becoming popular?" I'm like, "Yeah, it was. Wow, it got big in the culture right as it was getting big in the culture. What a coincidence!" <laughs> uh, we get a little shots of Anton Lavey here, and I just want to say, I knew Heath was part of the propaganda machine all along. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> big podcasting. Kevin Ship jumps in here to be like, "Oh yeah, I saw a bunch of satanic cults in high schools and middle schools. I'm a sane person." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, okay. So, and this is where we meet. Michael Aquino, yeah. the man that Anton LaVey told to tone it the fuck down. Uh, eyebrows. No, sorry. Okay, thank you. I heard um, nothing. Is this nothing. when that happened? Is is that eyebrows? They could Michael have, Aquino? They could have narrated how to make the cure for COVID out of V8 splash during this part of the movie. Because I was looking <laughs> at this Uncle Sam puppet looking motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, okay, so here's how fucked up this guy's eyebrows are. Heath is talking about this guy's eyebrows. Okay. <laughs> this guy's flying next to Dumbo using his eyebrows. It's <laughs> insane. They're insane. <laughs> And by the way, this guy was absolutely made for this movie. He was a Satanist who was all into like, you know, oh, look how evil and crazy I am and shit. Who was also like a former military intelligence officer that specialized in psychological warfare. So like he lived his entire life trying to freak out the stuntman Mike of the future. No question. <laughs> yeah. And just to review, in case you missed the episode of Citation Needed about this, Michael Aquino was the guy who splintered off Anton LaVey's Satanism cult because they weren't taking it seriously enough yep. <laughs> and actually believing in Satan, the ghost. Yep. <laughs> yeah, they show him on Oprah. And oh my God, Oprah's such a terrible fucking human being. She can't be on this for two seconds without being a terrible human being because she's interviewing the Satanist dude. And she says, well, you're in the army. Doesn't the army discriminate against you for having a religion I don't like? I, I don't understand why they would let you have a different, a non-Christian religion. And he's like, well, yeah, actually, the, the law allowed any religion. You see. Yeah, and again, like the explanation for Michael Aquino is just military first, crazy Satan is second. And then the, someone at Steve in Army HR was like, hey, Mike keeps showing everyone his Nazi knife. Do we have a thing that we can... <laughs> No, there's not a Nazi knife thing in the book. Can we put one? We can't put one in the bar. Damn. <laughs> yeah. So, okay. So, yeah, just in case you, you weren't, uh, we weren't clear that Michael Aquino was a terrible human being. We also see him salivate over this Nazi dagger that he owns for quite a while. But he sounds, he sounds and talks like Mr. Rogers. So he's just like, now this knife belonged to a member of the SS. Isn't that fun? It's fun to have <laughs> hobbies. <laughs> You make new friends and you learn to like new people. It's so good. And the way he pulls out the knife yeah. to show us is my favorite physical thing that happens in this movie. He's just talking like real quietly, like, yeah, you know, and um, here's a knife. It's a Nazi knife. Uh, right now it's in a sheath, but, um, you know, at any moment. Yeah. And like, but like it doesn't key off. Right. So he like has to struggle with it for a little. It's the best. Yeah, he can just barely get it out of the fucking sheath. 
<laughs> Forgot to grease. Sorry, can I take that one more time? <laughs> All right. Don't. Now it's, uh, no, it feels stupid. Shing! Can Am I it? saying it or can you put that into the film? <laughs> <laughs> we'll do both. And then, okay, so we cut away from Michael Aquino to learn how the CIA invented hippies. Hello. Because <laughs> of the because of the LSD that they had. Oh, we get a little clip of Timothy Leary here, and I just want to say I fucking love Timothy Leary with all my heart because he's just like, yeah, man. If they hadn't uh, given all those people all that acid, then uh, I wouldn't have given all those people all that acid, and then yeah, well, then I wouldn't have taken all that acid and realized that was way better than whatever the fuck I had going on before <laughs> 1971. Man. <laughs> So, yeah. You know blowjobs? They're fucking great. Anyways, <laughs> I'm Timothy Leary. So, yeah, the CIA turned uh, the boomers into big government shills. And I was like, ah, you know what? I mean, your timeline is a little <laughs> off. But <they're laughs> Nailed it. But, yeah, so, so, but here's the thing, though, guys. The CIA made the hippies, and then the hippies made Hollywood. In, <laughs> back in time. Retroact retroactively made Hollywood. This is where he explains how um all of the people who were involved in the CIA plots, their kids became celebrities. Became all of celebrities. Mm -hmm. Right. All of yeah. the celebrities yeah. were I guess that was just like a, a bonus you'd get on your check at the end of the <laughs> month. Yeah. So. And by the way, celebrities include uh, actually the entire list is Jim Morrison, Frank Zappa, and Jared Leto. Those are the celebrities. Yeah. The yep. celebrities. We got them. We got <laughs> exactly. them all. Well, did you, you, have you heard of the Gulf of Tonkin? That was Jim Morrison's dad, but you didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> it was, but what? Still, yeah, well, and nothing. again, that's another thing. Like, like, if you've never heard of the Gulf of Tonkin and you look that up, it's like, oh, okay, well, that some of the stuff in this movie does check out, doesn't it? Right. And the story to take away from the Gulf of Tonkin is that everyone sucks at keeping secrets. Really? Yes. Exactly. Nixon getting on TV and being like, hey, Macarena, Macarena, Macarena. <laughs> they hit us first. <laughs> all right. Well, I'll tell you what. My dad went to Vietnam and all I got was this lousy T-shirt. So I'm going to pause and file a fucking complaint with the Illuminati. But first, let me give Act 3 the hard sell here. Will the CIA get away with their nefarious plot? Will this movie manage to articulate exactly what that plot is? All right, fuck exactly. Will they even give us broad strokes? Find out the answers to these questions and more when we return for the somehow way crazier conclusion of Out of Shadows. Hello, I'm Grandma Beansbury. And I'm your mom's cousin's husband. And we're Terrible, terrible Gift, gift Givers. givers. I didn't know how good you were at the Game Boy, so I didn't want to give you the advanced one. And we only met once. I, I got uh, I got you for the Secret Santa. I, I, here's an $11 gift card to Dunkin' Donuts. It's 20 but I've used 9 I mean, who doesn't like a donut? But you don't have to be like us, because you've got Box of Awesome from Bespoke Post. That's right. Bespoke Post only sends guys the best stuff every month. No matter what you're into, Box of Awesome has you covered. From style and grooming goods to barware, cooking tools, and outdoor gear, Box of Awesome has carefully built collections for every part of your life. For instance, there's the Turbo Box, which comes with three kinds of single-origin coffee and two cans of nitro cold brew. Or the Island Box, which comes with tumblers, coasters, and tropical passion fruit syrup. Each box costs only 45 bucks, but has over $70 worth of gear inside. So get 20% off your first monthly box when you sign up at boxofawesome.com and enter the code AWFUL at checkout. That's boxofawesome.com, code AWFUL, for 20% off your first box. Got it. I'm going to buy you boxing lessons. An old shoe box. Perfect. Okay. Uh, you, uh, wanted to see me, Mr. Smith? Uh, Francis, come on in. Y you remember my colleague, Mr. Jones. Oh, uh, hello. Hello. So, uh, Francis, hey, can I call you Frank? Uh, sh sure. Great. Frank. So, we want to thank you for your incredible work on the Gulf of Tonkin project. Oh, man. It, like, it took days for people to figure that out. Yes. I mean, almost days. Almost, almost days. Exactly. Mm, yeah, right. Anyway, we'd like to give you a little bonus. Oh, a bonus? That's a great. I was hoping the family could get a new car. Um, well, it's, mm. it's not money per se. It's a not? No, no, not money. Um, So... You know how your son Frankie Jr. 
likes that guitar of his? Mm, yes, he does. Mm-hmm. Well, we, get this, are going to make him a rock star. A rock star, yeah. Like a big, important musician. You're, you're going to make my son a rock star as a bonus for me doing the Gulf of Tonkin. Uh-huh. Yeah. We, we sure are, you lucky duck. Okay, but like... What if uh, he wants to do something else? It seems like there's a lot of ways that this could go wrong. I mean, what if he's not good at music? Oh, we'll just call it experimental jazz. Oh, yeah, that'll do it. And a boy. And we're back for still more of this shit. And just in case your interest was starting to wane, we're going to open up this section by saying, you know what else the CIA does? Fuck stuff. Bunch of fuck stuff. <laughs> Kevin comes back on to say, like, oh, CIA, they're all about that ass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. And this is another true thing. Like, the CIA did the honey pots on the nerds to try yeah. to test if they could, you know, get compromising information on people. Yeah, they did that. That's true. And, by the way, they totally can. Like, the, the takeaway from that experiment of the CIA was, like, yeah, man, if someone sucks your dick, you'll pretty much give them the nuclear codes directly afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> right. And then and then they claim that the CIA was behind the whole Jeffrey Epstein thing, too, because they wanted to get pictures, compromising pictures of people having sex with kids. And I'm like, all right. Yeah, I would be zero percent surprised, honestly, if, yeah. that, if we found out that was true. That would that would not be surprised. OK, is this a good movie? It might be a good movie. <laughs> it's a weird, I will say that if it is true, it's a weird plot, right? Because if you don't like to fuck kids, that ruins your weekend and doesn't work on you, right? <laughs> if you just use, <laughs> start with regular, like, do, how do you slow pitch that? Like, right? Jeff's just there and he's like, hey, this is my niece. Uh, she's a brownie. <laughs> oh, okay, God. no boner. Yeah, well, we're going to just try a oh, regular Jesus. lady on this did guy. You, we'll wait, wait, did you lady. lean? No? Okay, no, 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 no. <laughs> Oh, fuck. At one point here, by the way, this is so weird, but at one point we sh- he starts showing a YouTube video on this YouTube video, and it actually <laughs> kind of freaked me right the fuck out. I'll be honest with you. For a second, I felt like I was falling in. <laughs> so, but then he starts explaining how the CIA controls all of the celebrities, like Beyonce and Lady Gaga and Katy Perry and Jared Leto. Yeah. Jim Morrison. That's all the celebrities, right? That, yeah, I think you added a couple actually that maybe aren't. I don't know. Yeah. But basically, it's like, yeah, in order for, you know, anything I've said this entire time to make any sense, Katy Perry and Taylor Swift would have to be in on this entire scam. Yes. <laughs> they are? Yeah. And we know this is true because George Carlin said. All right. <laughs> so at this point in the movie, he's trying to sell this idea that like no one would be allowed to stand up and uh, on a big platform and say what I'm saying here that the, the Illuminati's really in control. And to prove that point, here's George fucking Carlin saying it on an HBO special. One of the most <laughs> widely heard voices in the history of America. Now, I, I should let's be clear. Let's like do Carlin this favor. He's not saying what this stupid fucking movie is saying, right? Nope. He's not. Wait, George Carlin's not an anti-Semite who is making fun of globalists <laughs> in his bit? Right. Yeah. No, as 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 it turns out, no. Fucking George Carlin would have chewed this asshole up and shit him out if he were still alive. But the idea that, like, your your democratic choices are illusory, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, yeah. But, but again, the fact that George Carlin is saying it refutes this movie's central argument. Also, they cut out the swearing. So you can tell these are people who really get George. But yeah, well, those are some of the seven <laughs> words you can't say on YouTube, Eli. I don't know oh, if you understand, right, but there go. are. <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. Yeah. So uh, and then, OK, so then we get Mike trying to I honestly think the whole point of watching this movie is to listen to Mike try to pronounce demigod <laughs> or demigod. <laughs> yeah, what was exactly. That? You trailed off. You keep trailing demigod. off. <laughs> But say, the, spell the word you're trying to say. Yeah, no. D E M G etc. But so, but the point he's trying to make here is that Jay Z and Katy Perry are the new demigods. You see, that's who we worship now, mm. or demagogues, but, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or one or the other. Right, and the proof of this is award-winning journalist. 
<laughs> Ricky Gervais. Ricky Gervais bombing doing at the Golden Globes. Jokes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. So yeah, now it's time to talk about the elite pedophile ring. No, no, not the one that we tithe to that make this movie. No, not that one. Different one. The <laughs> other, the fictional one hello the elite one as opposed to like the jv squad <laughs> pedophile ring what the fuck yeah. kind of distinction is that in the, look when you're in the jv pedophile ring it's about having fun and learning the game <laughs> <laughs> everybody gets a trophy <laughs> It's also, there's also this great moment where stuntman Mike says, you know, I saw a lot of this. I mean, don't get me wrong. I never fucked any kids at Hollywood parties uh, kind of thing. I was like, man, nobody thought you did till you said you didn't, bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's talking about pedophiles. And he's like, I, I thought that was crazy. Like, you can't just like fuck kids without getting in trouble. Right. But then I remembered my work as a stuntman. And I was like, oh, Go on, I guess. What? <laughs> he will not go on. But that was no. it. Yes. <laughs> he just said, but then I remember my work as a stuntman. End of scene. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and then we introduce, oh, God, I love her. Liz Crokin. Now, Liz Crokin. <laughs> I had never heard of Liz Crokin, so I went to her Wikipedia page. It is all of like 83 fucking words long. And some of those words mention her as the central researcher in this movie. So yeah, that's correct. Uh, you might know Liz Crokin at home because she claimed that Tom Hanks was getting COVID because he had drank a tainted adrenochrome supply. Oh my fucking God. What? Which she says is extracted from the pituitary glands of tortured children. <laughs> oh, it's why would you need to torture the child if you're extracting? <laughs> Just get it out. That's weird. Yeah. But this, the, she's the ace in the hole yep. for this movie. Yep. Liz fucking Crokin, who comes on and is like, yeah, I'm a real journalist. Um, My mentor is Bill O'Reilly, so kind of a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, side note, Liz Crokin is very literally brain damaged from a severe case of viral meningitis that she yep. had. That she is. But she's going to be, again, the like the big closer for this movie. And yes, in charge of researching this entire movie. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. She spends this bizarre long amount of time pointing out how no true journalist would be in this documentary. As though she'd been kidnapped and was trying to send us a message. <laughs> <laughs> yep. She gives us uh, a little more of her bona fides here. She says, uh, I learned at the Chicago Tribune after O'Reilly. They taught me. You need to verify the, the things you say as a journalist. <laughs> and I was like, okay, that sounds. I mean, O'Reilly probably never mentioned that. Like, yeah, that right. Sense. True. <laughs> well, and she says that her boss told it to her, which means she she probably wasn't doing a great job if her boss had yeah, to come right. down and be like, hey, "Did you? Hey, you were thinking." Just so we're clear, <laughs> you have to say true things here at the Chicago <laughs> Tribune. <laughs> and she was like, "Well, fuck, no one told me that. Say true things. Yeah, it's true. on a post-it. There you go. Where'd you go well, to journalism didn't school? Give a shit about that." <laughs> Yeah, no, she gives us her bio like she's hoping we're fucking hiring. And then we find out why, right? Because she goes, and everybody took me very seriously as, as a journalist until I started reporting on Pizzagate. And I'm like, oh, it's so nice that I have this turntable handy. <laughs> and I got it earlier now. Oh, yeah. So we take we thought we were already in crazy town. Somehow we take a turn into crazy town from crazy town. And mm. we start talking about the side of Pizzagate that the mainstream media won't tell you about. We're going into the neighborhood of crazy town that the people in crazy town warn you not to go to. <laughs> yep. And the protagonist of the Pizzagate story is, of course, that true patriot who oh. went inside a pizza place full of children and fired an AR-15. Yep. Right. Which they tell that story and then it cuts back to Liz Crokin and she was like, yep, that was me. Yeah, <laughs> right. Right. Like yep. they're like, here's the consequences of people continuing to pretend that what we're about to pretend is true is true. In advance, right? We know what we know how much damage we're doing that with this, and we're going to keep doing it anyway. <laughs> so, so she starts explaining the real story behind Pizzagate, and it starts with the fact that there are code words in the Podesta email that only Liz Crokin can read. <laughs> right? So she she says, you know, the the word pizza keeps appearing over and over in in these emails in places where it would wouldn't make any sense. But then they show us an example where it totally makes fucking sense, right? I'm like, why not use one of these examples that 
demonstrates rather than refutes your point, Liz. The example is like, let's eat some pizza, the food together. Right. Well, okay, but but here's why it's so su- suspicious because it says, "Hey, do you want to get a pizza for an hour?" And in Liz Croak's Croak's fucking words, "Who eats pizza for an hour?" <laughs> what are you going to have some kind of lunch? What? A- hour? Got a whole hour for look, give me a fucking break. <laughs> why would you rent pizza by the hour? <laughs> What if you don't finish it by the time? <laughs> what the fuck? Hold on. Oh. Something's going on here. Let's think about the word pizza. It's P. That's urine. And <laughs> sa- that's me. <laughs> so. P me. The other example, by the way, that she shows is just Barack Obama sure has ordered a lot of pizza. And she was like, see? Right. Yeah. I mean, we know he was fucking Yeah, kids, exactly. So. so she's like, no, well, pizza is a code for child pornography. And at first I'm like, Wait, so that they were going to go get some child pornography for an hour? That makes even less sense. (laughs) But then I'm like, wait a minute. Wait, so they were doing this at a pizza place? What, to be meta? (laughs) (laughs) And see, that's always the best part of these kind of conspiracies. Like, you remember earlier in the year when people found, like, expensive bullshit furniture on Wayfair and they were like, oh, that's proof that they're selling child slaves because why would someone want a $20,000 couch? But, like... That implies that some rich asshole accidentally orders child slaves or Thinking some he's guy. The couch. <laughs> oh, this is a lovely stuff. Or that someone once walked into Comet Pizza and just accidentally was like, I'll have one cheese pizza. I'm here for a lunch hour. And they brought out a nine year old and he was just like, What? <laughs> <laughs> I don't I want a pizza. You guys should admit you're, you're the code and the, the theme of the restaurant. Do you see how it's going? Really I feel stuff. like you guys would accidentally maybe, deliver maybe a lot going. of child do, sex do a sushi slaves. place and then it's less confusing. <laughs> you know if you guys were like a barber shop and I came in and asked for a piece of nut that would be a good code but <laughs> so. in fact I, I, I'm gonna venture this it's the worst possible code for a piece of <laughs> everyone there is just shows up to work hi can I have a cheese pizza? okay wait 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 what do you say cheese pizza? do you want a cheese pizza or, or do you want a cheese, cheese pizza, pizza? <laughs> Do you want the cheese pizza to suck your dick? <laughs> See, now you said yes, Table but I don't know. Table for two. They- <laughs> wink. Got it. No, no, you said wink. I, what? So, yeah, all right. So, and then we hear from Ben Swan. Ah, uh, yes. Ben Swan, who, fun fact, used to work for Russian state TV, Jesus so you know Christ. he's reliable. Yeah, all right. And he's like, he's like, you know, a lot of people make fun of the satanic pedophile pizza gate theory but it turns out that no government entity has actually done an investigation of it even though john podesta has a weird instagram and (laughs) eats pizza for hours at a time (laughs) yeah and even though the owner of comet ping pong took a picture with a clearly pedophile his his shirt said I love the child in French, so he must be a pedophile. Okay, so this guy owns a restaurant called L'Enfant, which means the child in French. And But, like, according to the movie, we're to believe that a pedophile had a shirt with a pedophile slogan on it. Yes, right. Named his restaurant after a pedophile slogan. And luckily for him, it just happened that that pedophile slogan is also the fucking chief architect of Washington, (laughs) D.C. Long con, Noah. Long con. (laughs) Right now, the fucking rancher named Hollywood Hollywood had it all figured out. (laughs) He... Uh, oh my god at this fucking point i felt like i shouldn't look this movie in the eye right like it kept instinctually getting up thinking i should pretend this was my stop or something (laughs) they also had the uh the the symbols here the secret pedophile symbols (laughs) the triangle oh oh do you mean the existence of three-sided objects in the universe (laughs) (laughs) all right so obviously heath's in on it (laughs) But yes, whenever you see a triangle, that's code for child fucking. Or the basic shape of a slice of pizza. I don't know. (laughs) Coincidence? Again, maybe just switch to barbershop, guys. Guys, you're really (laughs) making it complicated. 
<laughs> yeah, there's a literal line in here where Liz Grogan's going, you know, they say this is all debunked, but why, if it's all debunked, then why are they sacrificing chickens to Moloch in their backyard? End of scene. <laughs> that, was, that was a sentence that she said in her life. Oh. And that was supposed to be based on an email that John Podesta literally sent to Hillary. Like, John Podesta was like, hi, Hillary Clinton. Uh, just dropping you a line. I'm sacrificing a chicken to Moloch. Okay, love John Podesta. Great. <laughs> well, and okay, hey, that is actually in the emails. It is so obviously tongue in cheek, right? It would be like quoting the intro for this show as proof that we were satanic cannibals, right? I guess we <laughs> fooled them. I'm going to sacrifice a chicken to Moloch. Yeah, yeah right, right. <laughs> oh. Also, and we're going to get back to this in a second, but they point out that if John Podesta isn't a Satanist, then how come he's hung around Maria Abramovich? Uh, Marina, yeah, uh huh, yeah, she'll come <laughs> back up before it's all over. Oh God, there's a point where Liz Crokin, like she says, you know, if you talked about this, if you tell anyone about this, you wind up dead. And then she realizes that her being alive refutes her argument. I expected her to start holding her breath at that point. <laughs> So fucking stupid. And then, okay, and so then we start talking about Jeffrey Epstein. And again, that's what this movie does, right? Like, we just told you a bunch of lying bullshit, and now they're going to, like, throw a few true things in there to fuck you up. Right. He did get murdered. So, like, I'm back on board. <laughs> that's true. Mm -hmm. This movie's a roller coaster of emotion, in fact, and fiction. Like, who's to say which is which? Oh, God. And, uh, this is also where Project Veritas chimes in. That's fucking hidden camera pimp James O'Keefe's organization the thing that like one time lied successfully and then has spent the entire rest of their existence getting caught every time they try to do anything and it's not even them saying like we have the scoop on this it's them being like oh we knew about the epstein thing the whole time we did we had it. totally we just like eh, we got this baby parts edit we're doing yeah, yeah, we'll right. yeah exactly <laughs> we'll get around to the very real pedophile ring we uncovered later but let's talk about these medical experiments huh yeah <laughs> and then uh, yeah and, and of course the point he's making here is that everyone was in on it everybody in hollywood knew about the epstein thing right and then oh and then we talk about alice and mac yeah this is a bummer well, okay, so here's the thing. This is a really fucked up story, so like our our jokes are fairly sparse here, but let's not let how fucked up that story is distract us from what's happening here. This callous bastard making this fucking movie is using these very real and very tragic cases of child rape and abuse to prop up some silly ass theory about the CIA controlling Hollywood with Satan magic. And in so doing, he's lifting the blame off of the shoulders of the actual criminals for the sake of YouTube views. Mm hmm. Yeah. But don't worry. If you were bummed out by that very real story of abuse and human trafficking, he's going to close this segment with a clip of Kanye West getting booed at his own concert. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, don't take our word for it. Maybe you've heard of a the presidential candidate, Kanye West. <laughs> it's just, it's shot from the back. It's obviously what they found on YouTube. And he's like, I can't get off my mittens. I can't get them off. <laughs> I hate these mittens. And everyone's like, boo, you're bad at music now. And he's like, you're bad at music now. Help me get my mittens off. I won't wear my shoes. <laughs> All right. So now, now uh, Liz shifts gears and explains that it, you're not allowed to even be successful in Hollywood if you refuse to join the evil Illuminati Satan Club. Right. And her example is Katy Perry used to be a gospel singer. Now, total Satanist. Yeah. Yeah. Right before she was famous, Katy Perry, not famous. <laughs> Coincidence? Mm -hmm. Well, no, it's a you're, never mind. Has to be the order. And then, of course, Lady Gaga, who is the epitome of evil for these people. Uh, well, no, I'm sorry, she's not right. She she is the uh, student of absolute evil. The absolute evil is Marina <laughs> Abramovich. <laughs> <laughs> Marina Abramovich, who, by the way, like I have had to watch her lecture not once but twice in college. I have had to go to her thing for assignments. Abramovich has one trick that has been working on the press and media and everyone who doesn't like bad art for years, which is she sounds like Melania Trump, 
but she's actually pretty smart. So people will be like, hey, why do you do that thing where you just sit there? And she's like, both modern them, you know? And they're like, holy fucking shit, you're Satan. Right. Well, so, but that's <laughs> the thing, right? I had never heard of her. I, another fucking rabbit hole I had to dive into in this stupid fucking movie. Oh. But she's just one of those people that does creepy shit so that people like the idiots that make this movie will make her famous for free. Yeah. And Nailed she it. says that constantly. Yes. She's like, Dad, just do some crazy shit and then everyone tweets about it. And I get <laughs> <Right>. like <laughs> two or three million dollars from the NEA and I, I just really don't care. So I bet uh, Mike, the stuntman, couldn't even make a documentary. <laughs> <laughs> also, she's been doing her bit for like 50 years like it's so boring at this point. <laughs> right? just, she just sits in the chair you can punch me in the face if you want to all right marina we get it you're fucking crazy and th- what i love is that they're they're swirling around all this weird shit she does like it's evidence of satanism and it's so close to just like i mean yeah if we want to get rid of the bougie culture of going to bad art i'm fucking in like, yeah you've right. Got me. <laughs> <laughs> right yeah exactly exactly <laughs> And they keep listing things that she does that are just so obviously half-ass publicity stunts. They're like, oh, but look, they eat cakes that look like human beings. It's like, yeah, because your dumb ass will talk about it. Or is it people that look like cakes? <laughs> <laughs> that's a what? great question, apparently, because that's where we go next. <laughs> All right, so now we turn to talk about uh, John Podesta, the great Satan himself. And, and this is where we realize that, or we, where we learn that Satanists are, like, I don't know, contractually obligated to leave clues for conspiracy theorists. <laughs> like the Riddler. <laughs> it's in their Satan rule. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> They're just talking to Moloch, and he's like, and by the way, if you could, like, mention this in very public, easy-to-find places... Yeah, that would be great. a lot of triangles, a lot of 666 symbolism everywhere. Don't forget to tell 10 friends. <laughs> <laughs> Satanism is an eye of the pyramid scheme. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, though, you've got a you've got a. Um, oh, that was really good. That was really good. Eli, I gave it a polite little laugh. And it was you. way funnier than that. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. I thought it was OK. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> There's also this great moment where, like, all of the documentarians are sitting around, like, patting each other on the back going, like, you have to be really gutsy to make a movie like the one we're making, huh? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right? Is this where we get to the ass-eating joke? Oh, God, yeah, with uh, with Jim Carrey. <laughs> Jim Carrey. Was this an ass-eating joke in your head? Yeah, that's an ass-eating joke. That's 100% an ass-eating joke. I will take a clip from this movie and spread it far and wide as proof. He's doing the ass-eating gesture. Okay, well, if you say it like that, it confirms your thing about ass eating. Go ahead. Thank you. And Jimmy Kimmel is like, oh, I've never heard of that. And Jim Carrey's ragging on him. He's like, oh, really? You've never heard of this? You don't know what this is? Jimmy Kimmel, you don't know what this is? And he's like, no, not at all. But they say that it's like slang for abusing children. Yeah, because it's a triangle. Because you're making a triangle with your hands. Just like a pizza. Oh, God, Jesus. Right. And this is after all of that, after all of that wacky fucking shit, after whatever, an hour and six minutes of just stream of consciousness, crazy stuntman Mike turns right to camera, looks us right in the eye and says, does Liz Crokin seem crazy now? <laughs> As though he thinks yes. the answer is no. <laughs> <laughs> crazier yeah i thought she was just wrong about a couple of things and then as if to prove that like 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 she heard someone say no so she's got to triple down she does her (laughs) tiny smoking guns metaphor which is fucking amazing yeah she says i don't have a a smoking gun i have a thousand small smoking guns stop analogizing lady you're gonna hurt yourself uh tiny little guns for kids i'm a journalist (laughs) and and she concludes this section by saying yes and now epstein is allegedly dead Yes. Uh, yeah, right. Now that he's allegedly dead. But but that's not the close. The close is so goddamn amazing. After all of this random shit, you know, after all of the stuff that we've just been talking about, that you at home are sitting there going like, the fuck connects one of these things to the other, right? At the end of all of that, Liz Crokin looks us in the eye and goes, 
And that's what Pizzagate is. <laughs> What's what Pizzagate is? Which of those things? All of those things? Triangles, <laughs> eating ass. <laughs> to be fair, the unfiltered ramblings of a mentally ill person and a con man are what Pizzagate is. So she yeah. is kind of right. <laughs> right, yeah, exactly. Right. But then Mike, the stuntman, comes back on and is like, okay, well, that was not helpful. I shouldn't have had this on. <laughs> Shit. So how does that all connect that she just tried to do? Because that was dumb. All right. What I want you to do is think about a song. Any old song. Was that song do. about fucking kids? No? Yeah, probably not. But okay, still. <laughs> Um, my thing. Damn. Well, so, and then, so Liz Crokin has failed to close it off. So stuntman Mike tries, he fails. And now we turn back to Brad. <laughs> Remember Brad? <laughs> he's going to try to tie it all off for us as well. Oh, <laughs> he's dropping hints so heavily that he's got a screenplay he wants us to read. And Brad, <laughs> Brad, baby, I want to read your screenplay. I want to read it so bad. I want to read it with Tom and Cecil on the record and everything. Yeah. No, it's, it, it, there's a great moment where he's like, well, you know, I'd love to go back and make movies again, but I want to make something that doesn't have all of the violence and, and uh, swearing and the sex and stuff. And I'm like, yeah, Brad, you left movies. That's what I, movies really <laughs> want you back, but you won't go. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, and then we get Stuntman Mike comes back and he's like, no, 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 wait, I got it. I got it now. <laughs> In the future, I hope the media isn't filtered, but also doesn't have violence or sex. So filtered. <laughs> okay, that didn't make sense. Can we get the Kegel lady back on? To maybe explain the movie? I don't know what's happening. I don't know what I mean. Yeah, but he he gives himself a great pat on the back, though, for making it all the way through the documentary without having any gratuitous sex in it. So, <laughs> like, keep that bar low, buddy. And we end on this ominous quote, the truth is learned, never told, which is so fucking stupid what? and perfect. What the fuck does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> Are you just telling us that you're lying to us? Because we know. <laughs> Does it move like passive osmosis style without being? What, what are you talking the about? The last line of this movie might as well be, or am I? <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I have a question to close with. And I'm, I'm serious here, though. What was the plot or scheme or conspiracy or whatever that this movie was trying to tell us about? Right. Like, seriously, like, what was this movie? Like, if this movie was trying to expose something, what was it? OK, I got it. I got it. Hear me out. Hear me out. I got it. So the Nazis that we brought over mm -hmm. who knew Nazi magic during World War Two as part of Project Paperclip, mm -hmm. they started all the media companies and those media companies, they they use their Satan Nazi magic to get Maria Abramovich to trick John Podesta into mm. fucking kids at a pizza yep. parlor. Yep. And um, now we all eat ass. Now we all eat ass. And profit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and well, that does it for our review of Out of Shadows. That's not going to do it for the episode just yet, though, because we still need a coke show back in next week. So, Eli, tell us what's on deck. Well, Noah, it's time for another episode of the Christian Saturday Night Live. Oh, fire by night. Episode three. <laughs> all right. So with that to look forward to, we're going to bring episode 259 to a merciful close. Once again, a huge thanks to all the Patreon donors to help make the show go. If you'd like to count yourself among their ranks, you can make a per episode donation to patreon.com slash god awful and thereby earn early access to an ad-free version of our episode. You can also help us a ton by leaving a five-star review and sharing the show on all your various social media platforms. And if you enjoyed this show, be sure to check out our sibling shows, The Scathing Atheist, Citation Needed, D&D &D Minus, and The Skeptic Crowd, available wherever podcasts live. If you have questions, comments, or cinematic suggestions, you can email godawfulmovies at gmail.com. Legal services for this podcast are provided by the law offices of P. Andrew Torres. Tim Robson takes care of our social media. Our theme song was written and performed by Ryan Slott. We will dress on Mars. All of the music was written and performed by our audio engineer, Morgan Clark, and was used with permission. Thanks again for giving us a chunk of your life this week. For Heath Enright and Eli Bosnick, I'm no illusions. Promise to work hard to earn another chunk next week. Until then, we'll leave you with a Breakfast Club close. Liz Crokin went on to win a Pulitzer Prize for investigative journalism when she uncovered that Jeffrey Epstein was murdered by Derek Zuland. <laughs> <laughs> the Noid became a much darker mascot today. <laughs> Nobody 
ever ate pizza in time units ever again. <laughs> A temporal pizza. <laughs> Sorry, Morgan, that's going to be a fucking nightmare because I'm adjusting my mic the whole time. Oh, was it? Yeah. It sounded like you were squeezing out of shit right there at the beginning, too. Yeah, I was scooching my chair around and shit was uh, clankier than normal. But Mm -hmm. I I don't know. I don't know if I'd even say that. But yeah. Yeah. You're clankier than normal compared to people who shit. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, yeah. Okay. The preceding podcast was a production of Puzzle and a Thunderstorm, LLC. Copyright 2020. All rights reserved.